Hi, my name is Albert Dunford, and in this tutorial video, we are going to look at the outer voltage loop of this buck converter. We're going to look at determining the cross frequency and phase margin. So we'll look at the um, outer voltage loop here. We can see that this is a buck converter with average current mode control. So we're feeding back on the inductor current, and we're also feeding back on the voltage. And we'll, we'll look at the cross frequency of phase margin of the outer voltage loop. We can run this converter real quickly here, and we can see that the uh, closed loop voltage looks good at 3.3 volts. And we can look at the inductor current as well. We can see what that looks like, and we can zoom in and have a quick peek at uh, the current waveform here and auto scale to look at what the ripples look like. So uh, we can see that. Uh, we're switching nicely here at about 250 kilohertz. So we'll set this up so that we can determine the cross frequency and the phase margin of the outer voltage loop. Okay, so to do that, I've actually got some blocks pre-built here. I've got a sinusoidal source and a AC sweep probe, which is a node to node AC sweep probe. And I'm gonna insert this into the voltage feedback path. So we'll just simply wire it in. This probe element, it comes from uh, in here. So power control other, we go to probes and it is this uh, AC sweep probe uh, for closed loop uh, response. And then we also need an AC sweep block. This comes from uh, the other uh, folder here. So elements other, and we need the multi-sign AC sweep. We'll enable this. So some key parameters of this, we need this name, so V control, we need that to match uh, this source name here. And then uh, we'll look b between 10 and 10 kilohertz, we'll use 40 points. And this uh, source amplitude, I had to play around a little bit with the source amplitude to find one that looked good. Uh, but a good place to start would be 10% uh, of your reference. So in this case, the reference being 1. So I started with 0.1, and I, I came up with uh, 0.06 in the end. So you'll end up between 10 and 5 to 10%. So the last thing to look at is where the converter hits ten, the steady state. And you can see I've put in 10 milliseconds here. And I've really stretched that out. You can see that we have uh, definitely we've hit steady state by 10 milliseconds. There's no real need to push things. It, it'll simulate pretty quickly otherwise. And then essentially, we're ready to go. So we'll hit start. And we'll let this thing simulate, and we can see that we're almost done here. Just a few more seconds, and we'll get our plot out. Okay, so here we go. So <clears throat> with this plot, we can come and look at what the cross frequency is, uh, which is right here. So where the um, amplitude hits zero, uh, 0 dB, or this is the cross frequency, which is 1.4 kilohertz. And our phase margin will be, if I pull up the calculator, will be 180, 180 minus 95, and the phase margin is 85 degrees. So that's how you determine the cross frequency and phase margin. You may wonder what happens if, if this tuning doesn't look good, so let's put in a, a number that's far too big. And if we run this, we'll see that, that the output doesn't look very good at all. And uh, that's because we've got too much of an amplitude. So playing around with the amplitude is pretty key. And also making sure that your start and end frequencies are, are good. So here we can see with too much um, with too much of a signal of a perturbation amplitude that the phase doesn't look very good at all. So make sure that you play around with these settings to find the ones that work for you. It doesn't have to be perfect in the end, but um, you just make sure that you get something that looks good. Okay? Thank you so much for watching. That's it for this tutorial video.